Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Today we're gonna to do our commodity uh, technical analysis update. We're gonna look at the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs, at least the ones that I follow. And if you need any help with anything, check out finding-value.com. We do have a community on there. We've got a Discord channel. Uh, we've got uh, question and answer sessions on the weekend. Uh, there's one at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Saturday this weekend. Uh, we'll see all you guys there. And then I also do midweek updates and have my portfolio and all that stuff on there. So let's dive in. Let's see what's going on today. And I'll give you my financial opinions. So let's dive in here, starting with the dollar. So we were talking about this resistance that we've got. Resistance, resistance, resistance. And I we were talking about yields. And I didn't know which direction yields were going to go in the short term. Uh, generally speaking, stronger yields, stronger dollar, weaker yields, weaker dollar. So we see a large selling, you know, sell off of the DXY or big move lower today down 0.75%. Now when we go and we go look at the yield curve or the yield, I should say. So this is the two year yield. I'm still not exactly sure where this would go, but I, I would, this is where I would guess. I think we've got a little bit of a, Kind of an increasing wedge with a little bit of larger selling pressure coming down. So I do think this is going to work its way lower over the next week or two. Uh, but again, short-term market timing is the most difficult. So I don't do the short-term stuff, but to me, that's what it looks like we could potentially do is a move lower. Bigger picture view, if we do have a slowdown in the system and you're in the recession camp, you're going to be looking for a decline in yields because people are going to run to bonds for safety. So when they run to bonds, yields drop, uh, lowering the yields. And if that were to happen, if we see that thing move lower, we're going to see gold and silver take off, especially gold. That's going to be the one that is highly linked to some of this stuff. Uh, silver generally follows suit as well. The 10 year yield also heading lower today, down 1.88%. And that does look like we could see some further movement to the, to the downside. So we gapped up in the morning, sold off throughout the day, breaking that uptrend. So if you were to look at it from a little bit, a little bit different perspective, uh, this is the uptrend I'm talking about. There's your, your gap up in the morning and then the sell off throughout the day. So that does look like we could go lower with the 10-year yield. Uh, what does that mean? It means that if the two-year, 10-year, and 30-year, all the yields all drop, it's the curve not always uninverting. That means the short end goes down faster than the middle and, and, and the middle and long end. So that's generally a, a huge tailwind behind precious metals. And you can you if you know what moves with what. You can hedge your portfolio. If, if you're really long in oil, you can hedge it with precious metals uh, and or precious metals companies or whatever it is. But this does look like it could go lower in the short term. Uh, same with the 30-year yield. We gapped up in the morning. That's our opening price. and We sold off throughout the day. That is breaking the uptrend line of the past. There it is. And there it is, breaking that uptrend line to the downside. So I do think we could see further yields declining in the short term. Uh, but again, it's been incredibly volatile. Things have been moving up and down all over the place. So if, if, if they decide, oh, no, it's going to be some sort of strength in the markets or something's not right, this could reverse very quickly. I think the markets don't really know where interest rates should be priced at in the short term it's trying to figure that all out tyx tnx ratio slightly higher this does look like we're trying to put in some sort of like double bottom you can see like these little wicks at the bottom there uh, so if this were to to roll higher um this is highly correlated with the price of gold i mean highly highly correlated we're at a very low level if we move higher gold uh generally goes up with it so if i were to put gold in here just to show you guys in a new pane you can see when this goes up, 
between the white and blue line, gold goes up between the white and the blue line. And you can almost see that uh, as this goes up, gold goes up. And then you can see it go down, it goes down. So that's the yield curve inverting and uninverting. Think of it as uh, inflation fear, fear of recession or a problem, uh, a slowdown in the market or whatever it is. That is that is what that means. So when we look at this and we're at a very low level and we could go higher in this ratio and it doesn't mean that it has to go higher. We could stay down for a while. But if we were to go higher, gold is the spot to be looking for, and just precious metals in general, gold, silver, uh, and platinum does its own thing sometimes, but not all the time. So bond prices, uh, we're getting buying pressure here and we've been moving back and forth. Now, yesterday I said, hey, this is probably gonna go lower. It reversed that quite quickly today. So if we zoom in on here, uh, go to like a five day, you can see how we sold off yesterday like this all the way down and then it just boom reversed and ripped it higher. So that is what bonds look like. And we could, I mean, right now it's battling back and forth uh, with the momentum to the upside. We'll see if that continues. So gold up $25. I looked pretty weak yesterday. Uh, it opened pretty much flat today. So we came on down, we opened up flat, and then we just rocketed on higher. Uh, and, and again, this is highly tied to yields and what the bond market is doing. So this is a, I would say, sometimes gold is front-running yields, sometimes yields is front-running gold. Uh, but right now, I like where it's at. We're above support. Everything looks good for a gigantic move in gold to the upside. Uh, if gold were to take off and we see that yield curve uninvert, I think we're going to see a big move in gold. Big, big move. Uh, much like, like, much like um, this move here. That type of move. Silver uh, ripping it. Holy 3.67 or 66%. Big old move to the upside. That still looks good to move higher if it wants to. Uh, big green army showing up over here. Looks fantastic. Uh, platinum down 0.8%. Uh, it's still basing out a little bit, but it's still underneath this short-term resistance line. Bigger, longer term, uh, I think we are going to rip it to the upside uh, with time. Not immediately, just with time. Uh, this is the cheapest metal of all the metals in a ratio perspective. XEU to gold ratio, uh, slightly lower today. What direction are we going to go here? Jeez, we are back and forth. Uh, this looks not that bad, but, it, but today with a little bit more of a selling pressure day, that is a reversal candlestick to go a little bit lower. Um, and we haven't broken this big downtrend line yet on the long term, which is huge if we can break that. Uh, the CRB index up 0.34%. Are we going to try to get through this resistance line that I've drawn in there? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. CRB to S&P 500 dropping today. And when yields drop, that 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 is a little bit of a tailwind behind uh, the overall stock market. So I don't think we're done yet. And this is going to be volatile because if we do have fear in the market, stocks may or may not do well under that environment. Uh, commodities may or may not do well under that environment either. So. We might go kind of back and forth here. Uh, GDX up 1.58%. Uh, so it doesn't look too, I mean, we're kind of in this indecision. We've got momentum coming down. We've got a nice little pop here. And it's like, which direction are you going to go? What direction? Same with GDXJ. It's doing the same thing. He hits, hits a little bit of support, popped up higher. And we're just kind of sitting there not knowing the direction. I think that deals with yields. Uh, SILJ up 1%. Again, we're right up against that resistance line, the trend line. And we need to figure out which direction we want to go. I want that XAU to goal ratio to move higher that we talked about earlier. That still looks good to go higher if it wants to. Uh, crude oil down 2.23%. I don't know what happened in the middle of the day here, but we did sell off dramatically and bounce off that support level and come back up. Uh, so it doesn't look horrible because we, we've got a nice big wick on the bottom there. Uh, but it, we're just chopping sideways. 
Natural gas also chopping sideways, putting in the basing pattern. Still looks good to move sideways to higher, slightly higher. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me, it doesn't look bad. Uh, given crude oil down 2.23% and also natural gas down, this is a bullish formation. It's a bloody nose and we could go higher. What's a bloody nose? Tall green candlestick with a small down red profit taking day. It's just a small one. And it, and it bounced off that support trend line quite well. So that, that still looks good to go higher. We'll see what the overall commodity does. Uh, OAH also putting in a bloody nose that looks to, good to go higher. Uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Okay, here we go. Um, up today, we're underneath that 1815-ish level. It's not, not perfect. Um, it's going to try to take a run at it, guys. And if we can break out here, Pat yourself on the back if you've been holding it for this long, you know, long time. Um, we could see a very big run, a very big run. Uh, and we're going to try to run at it right here. So we've got a nice little update here. Let's see if that momentum can carry us up. We've got a lot of resistance there. That's why we get wicks at the top. Comes up, sells off, comes up, sells off, comes up. It's, it, it's that, that selling pressure that it's hitting. We've hit that selling pressure, you know, multiple, multiple times under here. We got it hit up there too. So lots of times we're hitting it. We've got a lot of resistance. We got to work our way through it. And if the buyers keep hammering the door, we're going to break through that resistance level at some point. Uh, URNM, URNM also looking incredibly good. Oh man, look at that, guys. Look at that. We, uh, we're up 3%. We have a pretty good candlestick here. I like this. This is a bullish engulfing, uh, very strong, finishing strong. Uh, so that looks good. And I wouldn't get discouraged if you get a little bloody nose tomorrow next to it or anything. Or if we just keep ripping, I'm cool with that too. Um, I've already got my big stake in this. Uh, again, we are looking for a new high. So our next um, spot is about 38.50. We want to get up above 38.50 for the promised land. The promised land that we've all been waiting for. URNJ uh, also hitting it quite good. Nice, strong finish. Let's rip it here, guys. This looks really good for a move higher. Uh, let's hope that momentum can continue. Again, I'm not the one in here dropping billions or million, hundred, you know, tens of millions of dollars, uh, billions of dollars moving markets. So it's up to the markets uh, and what the market participants are, are doing here. Uh, so I, I think both look really good, uh, Sprott and the ETFs. Tan still looking good to go higher. You can see that there's not much selling pressure through here. Lots of support underneath. You can see all these little candlesticks. Uh, it's it's the, and and you see larger green candlesticks mixed in. So I don't think the selling pressure is here. I think it's going to go up. Uh, COPX also heading higher. There's your bullish engulfing little bloody nose uh, continuation higher. Now it's up to the momentum to carry us as far as we can. Um, it may puke out right where it's at, or it can keep going. Uh, COPX on a long term is a double bottom with it's just consolidating. And this is generally a really good time uh, to accumulate before it goes into an uptrend because this is a basically a bottoming pattern this year. So it's downtrend, bottoming pattern, and then it goes into an uptrend. Lithium, uh, ooh, lithium, 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 lithium up a half a percent. Let's see if we could punch. Let's see if we can punch through. Uh, bigger picture view, it's a falling wedge, and we, we're going to try to punch through here. Uh, REMX also right up against that resistance line trying to punch through here. Uh, bigger picture view, there it is, squeezing up. S&P 500, moving higher. Uh, remember, these are interest rate sensitive. That's why we go over interest rates first. What did interest rates do and what did the dollar do? Dollar down, interest rates down. S&P 500 higher. So that's looking good. It's a tailwind when that market condition occurs. Uh, the NASDAQ, loving it. We had a, a very strong selling pressure yesterday. We had increasing interest rates. These assets are all sensitive to interest rates. They're derivatives of the interest rate. So we've broken to the upside. We had a reversal candlestick here because we had a very strong interest rate move to the upside yesterday dollar interest rate fall, and here we are going back higher again. Uh, emerging markets, like in that weaker dollar, that does look good to move on higher. Uh, XHB down a little bit, uh, but that's still 
got has momentum going to the upside. Look for a retest of this breakout here. We might get a little bit of a selling pressure day two or three or whatever it is. Uh, back to that trend line, support line now. Uh, Moo still getting the uh, the small down day, so that still looks good to move on up. Uh, no reversal candlestick really. Copper, come on, copper, punch it, punch it. Looks good to go higher. Um, again, I think this is tied to interest rates to some extent uh, and, and the dollar. The dollar coming down is big. That's tied with interest rates. And the, the weakening dollar, since these are all priced in dollars, it's going to push the dollar price on up. Iron ore moving on up. That looks good. Look at all those updates. Uh, and we're at a nice location where we came in to support. And I said, this is probably going to base out and move on higher. Here we are. Uh, nickel. This guy still needs to, I think it's still basing out here, kind of draw a line across there. Uh, I'll, draw, I'll draw a little one there. Got support right where we're at, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, aluminum up 2.22%. Um, we're basing out here. This looks good to go and try to move on higher. We're getting the green army. Uh, green army is large green candlesticks, small red candlesticks. Uh, usually, what you see is large selling pressure, and then it changes. Uh, over time as it bounces, and then you reverse and move on up. Uh, Baltic dry index up a little bit. Uh, it was up massively, trying to put in some sort of bottom here. So this would be a low and then a higher low. And then we want to break this in, and get into a new uptrend with a higher high. So that's the Baltic dry index. Newcastle uh, coal futures up 1.15. Let it base out. But I do think we're low, and we're right above support. There's your support level. And I bet you we're gonna find support in the general vicinity of where it's at now. Ethereum down, 2.6 something percent. Uh, looks like it's hanging in there though. Lots of support resistance all through here. And then we've got Bitcoin also slightly higher, lots of support resistance in this general vicinity. So that's what I've got for today, guys. That's what I'm seeing in the markets. Um, we'll see where interest rates go. It's kind of interesting to see where this all goes. Interest rates moves a lot of these sectors. Uh, some sectors prefer it going down. Some sectors prefer it going up. Uh, oil, I would say oil doesn't mind increasing interest rates. Um, gold does not like it. Gold likes a falling interest rate environment, especially when the yield curve uninverts and uh, weakening dollar. The dollar generally weakens with, the, uh, with weakening yields. So uh, we're at a turning point here. Let's see what happens. And I'm riding through it, guys. I've got all these different sectors. You just need a couple of them to really take off and, and hit it. Uh, and if you've structured the portfolio well, you don't have to win in everything. Um, that's where the symmetry comes into play. Uh, if you've got five, six, seven, eight, ten times upside, and you've got you know, 20, 30% of your portfolio in it, just say 33%, a third, a third, a third. Um, if you have a 30 year portfolio go up, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times your money, uh, you make a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's that uh, simple. So what I do is I look at all the different sectors and say, well, these are the four, five, six best sectors. Um, I pick some pretty big asymmetric bets uh, and then I let it ride. That doesn't mean you win on everything though. Does not mean you can have losers. Uh, and that's why we allocate certain percentages um, to these positions because some of them are going to lose. That's part of the game. Um, I know a lot of people, what they try to do is they try to guess which one is going to do well. They overweight it like heck and may or may not something in their control or out of their control of the company could happen. Uh, it could be weather related. It could be a hurricane. It could be, uh, it could be anything. Who knows what it is, uh, but that could impact the, the company. So, uh, that's why I, I structure the portfolio the way I do. That's why I look at things from a risk perspective. Uh, and I, I dump a lot of money in the what I consider to be the least risky things. But that's what I've got for today, guys. Thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you'd like. And I'll catch you Saturday at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time if you decide to go to the question and answer session. All right, guys. Catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.